About a year ago, I bought my Ibanez AC340. This is it here. Still absolutely love this guitar. The way it plays, the way it sounds, and you may remember if you watched the original video, I'll stick it up there, that it doesn't have a preamp system. So, I was on my couch thinking to myself, as you do, I love the Cremona M20E acoustic guitar. It's just behind me there. And the sound that it gets from the LR Bags EAS VTC preamp, I since learned that it stands for Element Active System Volume Tone Control. Element is a lot less of a mouthful. So, I digress. I was thinking, wouldn't it be good to have that system in the old IBO? Well, I looked online and you can order it. So I did. And here it is. So, I think it's time to give the old IBO an upgrade. Give it what it deserves. There's only four steps and I'll take you through this. So let's electrify this amazing guitar. These are all the bits and pieces that you're going to need to complete this. You can pause the video here and take a look, but I'll also put them down in the description as well so that you can check them out a bit later on. Now you won't need the file if you've got a half inch drill bit. I didn't unfortunately so I needed that. So let's crack on with the pre-install. All I'm going to do here is remove the lower strap button and then just remove the strings from the acoustic guitar. I'll speed that bit up. I'm sure you don't want to watch somebody remove strings from an acoustic guitar. So let's crack on with step one, the drilling. All you've got to do is take it slow and take it careful. I've marked the half inch step on my stepped drill bit with a piece of tape just to make sure that I don't go too deep. Nice and slowly we'll get the job done here. Then let's just check the preamp to make sure it's going to fit into that half inch hole. Now as I said earlier I didn't have a half inch drill bit so I'm using a quarter inch drill bit here just to drill through the block and then I'm going to get a file and file out the hole. It actually didn't take too long. What I'm going to do here is just check that the preamp fits this side of the hole because if it fits this side it's going to fit through the other side. And then the next step is just to remove the saddle because we're going to drill that 3mm or 1 8 of an inch hole down into the bridge. I'm using, as I said, a 1 8 of an inch drill bit, but I checked the opposite end of the drill bit down into the bridge just to make sure that it was going to fit because I didn't want the drill end marking the bridge unnecessarily. I'm just checking that I'm right in the corner here and it does say in the instructions to drill this at an angle, but also keep the drill straight because you don't want to mark the bridge unnecessarily. I also went quite slowly and didn't push too hard to make sure I didn't damage the bridge. And here's the hole here. Okay, step two. Let's install the preamp. So first I'm going to unpack it, just check all the wiring, just to see what's going on. The instructions are really good, so they were really helpful. But in this cable bundle we've got the preamp, the piezo strip, the battery connection and the controls. There are a series of nuts and washers that come with the preamp, so what I did, I got one of the nuts and screwed it right the way down to the end of the preamp. Now I wasn't sure if I was going to need to adjust it afterwards, luckily I didn't, it was a perfect fit. Then I put the flat washer on and then afterwards put the grip washer on. The next stage is to feed the complete wiring loom into the sound hole and then try and get the preamp through that little hole. One of the good things about the Ibanez AC340 is that the sound hole is quite large. I quite like that aesthetically anyway, but it does allow me to get my shovel-like hands through the hole in order to poke the preamp out the other side. Then I'm going to put the flat washer on and then the nut on as well. I do use an adjustable wrench or an adjustable spanner just to nip that up, just pinch tight. Don't over tighten it because obviously it's metal going into wood.
Once that's done, all I'm going to do is screw the end cap on, which completes the new strap button. I'm only doing this up finger tight. Okay, now I'm going to mark the saddle for later because obviously once the flat piezo strip is under the saddle, it is going to raise the height of the saddle up. So I'm going to make a first mark here and then I'll explain what's going on in a little bit. And now we need to get this flat piezo strip up through that little hole that we made earlier. It's quite fiddly, took me some time, so I'll speed this bit up, but I got it through eventually. It's also quite important to keep the piezo strip flat, obviously, under the saddle, so that when you put the saddle in, there's no twisting on the piezo strip and you get a good transfer of sound. I'm also going to secure that on there temporarily with a small piece of masking tape that's going to allow me to make that second mark. Now the idea here is, because the flat piezo strip has raised the height of the saddle, I'm just going to put some gentle pressure on there and make another mark. There might be other ways to do this, but in my head I was thinking the distance between these two marks now is how much I need to remove from the bottom of the saddle. Although it does tell you in the instructions how much you need to remove. Just going to use a straight edge. You can use any straight edge just to make that mark and then we'll carry on with the adjustment of the saddle. I'm using 320 grit sandpaper and I'm keeping the saddle really straight so that I've got a nice flat surface underneath and I'm just going to sand it down to the mark that I made earlier. I'll also speed this bit up, I'm sure you don't want to watch me sanding a saddle. Okay, and now I'll fit the saddle back into the bridge, secure it with a small piece of masking tape, and then I'll remove the masking tape once we've restrung the guitar. Here, I'm just checking one of my other guitars for reference, because I wanted to know where the battery holder should be placed. Okay, step four, the battery and the controls. So we'll connect the battery up, we'll put it into its holder, and the sticky pad on the holder has a really good grip and I'm going to put this just at the base of the neck you probably see just through the hole there but I'm going to make sure that the opening to the battery holder is facing the left so that whenever I need to replace the battery I've got easy access to it. Perfect. Moving on to the controls, the volume and the tone. Now just underneath the sound hole on my guitar, there's a lot of bracing. So I'm not limited to where I can put the controls, but ideally I'd have liked it a little bit more forward towards the neck, but I couldn't do it because of the bracings there, as you can see. So I had to move it back just a little bit, just to find the perfect spot where I can have the tone and the volume knobs just sticking out slightly without too much of the control unit being seen. I was also careful when I located this just to make sure that when I put the control unit sticky pad on that I didn't push the tone and the volume controls from the edge. I tried to stay in the center because obviously I didn't want to bend the tone or volume controls and I didn't want to break anything. Mm -hmm. 
You also get a lot of cable clips with the preamp, so now's the time just to tidy up the wiring underneath there. The way I did it was, so when you look through the sound hole, you didn't see any of the wiring, but you can put them wherever you like. As I always do with my guitars, when I take the strings off, we just go through a bit of maintenance. I'm going to get all of that dust off, and then I'm just going to use some lemon oil on the rosewood fretboard. Not ideal for maple fretboards, of course, just rosewood. Ordinarily, I'd polish the frets as well, but I've uh, recently polished them, so I didn't need to do that. Now I'm going to use my mechanical pencil just to put a bit of graphite into the nut to reduce the string stick, because sometimes the strings can get caught in the nut, and this helps that. Now I'm going to restring the guitar, and once you've got a couple of strings on, you can then remove that masking tape from the saddle. Okay, here's the exciting bit. So let's plug it in, let's tune it up, and let's listen to what this preamp sounds like with the Ibanez. Now I know what you're thinking, why did I spend $300 on the Ibanez and then another $160 on the LR Bags Element? Why not just sell it and get an acoustic guitar with a preamp already fitted? Well, when you find an acoustic guitar that you just gel with, an acoustic guitar that plays like an electric, where the neck is so comfortable and the unplugged sound is amazing, you just have to stick with it. There's no way I'd sell this guitar. And now that it has the preamp in there, I love it even more. this helped you out if you fancy giving this a go just take your time measure twice and cut once as they say you stay well and I'll see you I'm off to enjoy the old eyebow <laughs>